Thank you, Madam President. Not since the 1930s has mankind been tasked with tackling the perverted mindset of a completely flawed ideal. Before Britain joined the European Community, our independent foreign policy allowed us to broker alliances for, for the protection of those who were threatened. However, in the name of commonality, we are losing this skill. This is all the more tragic as genuine diplomacy is what is needed at this pivotal moment in history. Your obsession with harmonisation and a belief that you are always right can only be defined as navel-gazing. Britain, not the European Union, needs to take a lead here, not with troops on the ground, but with the diplomacy to motivate and galvanise a global community of reasonable people, including moderate Muslims, to put a stop to these murderous fanatics, including the EU citizens in their ranks, who are intent on destroying the tolerance and decency which underpins civilised society. The Western world wanted regime change in Libya and Syria, Yet, our leaders fail to comprehend how tangled the web of Middle East politics really is. Diplomacy isn't about the good guys against the bad guys. It's about understanding how competing countries with competing interests can nevertheless find common ground against this global threat. So, this place has to wake up and smell the coffee. If we are serious about tackling IS, then, just like in 1941, you have to accept Russia and now her ability to reach out to Middle Eastern states who view the West differently. I'm no fan of Assad or Putin, but I recognise the old premise that my enemy's enemy is my friend. If we are to forge a genuine coalition against IS, then you have to stop provoking Putin's Russia as you did so theatrically here in this chamber yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carver, would you accept a blue card from Mr. Etheridge? Etheridge. Yes, Mr. Etheridge. Thank you. Thank you. Does my colleague agree with me that the acts of barbarism committed by British citizens in the name of this twisted ideology of IS are a disgrace and will he join with me in uniting to put all of our ab abilities together to make sure these people do not ever return to British shores or to the EU to perpetrate more acts of evil barbarism? So, if I could, th if I could thank my just... colleague for my question, he raises a very serious point, and yes, I do agree, this whole issue of EU open borders creates a problem not just for militants who may be British citizens returning to Britain, they may indeed choose to settle in other parts of the European Union and become a threat and take forward this barbarous, mon monstrous ideal. And it is a serious threat, this open door border situation is a serious threat to the safety of all 28 EU member states. Thank you. Um, I see Mr. Tannock having a blue Fine. card. Yep. Would you, the blue card, Mr. Tannock, is also for Mr. Carver. Then, Mr. Carver, would you accept the blue card from Mr. Tannock, please? Uh, on a point of order, Madam President, in all my years in this Parliament, I've never see the, seen the President allow a member of one national delegation from one party ask a blue card of another in order to get two speeches out of one and play to a domestic gallery for political purposes. It was a clever move, Mr. Etheridge, but I don't really think it should be encouraged in this Parliament. I salute your uh, uh, creativity in this respect. My question to Mr. Carver is a political one. He said that the enemy of your enemy is always your friend in foreign policy. Well, I would he not agree that, in fact, we made a terrible mistake in 1979 in thinking that Mujahideen in Afghanistan, being the enemy of the Soviet Union, were our friend and backing them. The CIA and the Americans backed these jihadists, and we created a huge problem for the whole of the Western world. So I would hope that you could grow up and realize that the enemy of your enemy is always your friend is not actually the way that we should conduct our foreign policy. Thank you, Mr. Tanak. I think all of us realised what's the trick in it, but still, Mr. Carver... Thank you, Mr. Tanak. It's clearly you and your party that's politically posturing here, because we have on many occasions in the previous Parliament seen your, your party carry out exactly the same tactic. But with regards to comparing the Mujahideen with Putin's Russia, I th feel there is no serious 
comparison. We have a situation here where we have to look at the wider picture and the influence that Putin does have in parts of the Middle East that Western countries and indeed this organisation does not have. So we have to be realistic and as was said yesterday by Mr Farage in this chamber, we have to stop prodding the Russian bear. Thank you. Okay.